Hello everyone. Today we are studying about Lamarckian theory, one of the theories of organic evolution. As we all know, it's proposed by Jean Baptiste Lamarck, one of the renowned French naturalists, and was the first to advance a comprehensive scientific theory to explain organic evolution. We all studied uh, about Lamarck's theory in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we know that it's proposed by Jean Baptiste Lamarck. He published his views in 1809 in his book Philosophy Zoology. His views on organic evolution came to be known as Lamarckism or Lamarck's theory of evolution and also known as theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics. It holds that an organism can pass on to its offspring the characteristics it has already acquired during its lifetime. This may be called heritability of acquired characters or soft inheritance. That is, a parent in the lifetime le oru oru adaptation alengil. And the character acquired it in the the offspring like inherit chiapedum. Major postulates are nature tend to continually enhance the size and efficiency of an organism and their component parts through environment influences and internal forces of life. That is, nature environmental influences internal forces of life and organism the size increase the efficiency uh, that increase in that uh, is the efficiency enhance in Formation of new organ is the result of new need felt by the organism. That is the next one. Uh, that is the new organ form in that organism that is the need 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 that is Perfection and maximum growth and development. Whereas its constant disuse leads to weakening, reduction, degeneration and disappearance. That is why we use constant organ That is modify, that is perfect, that is and maximum growth and development. That is why we use the organ constant to be weak, that organ weak, that is reduce and degenerate and disappear. This is the theory of use and disuse. Next, the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Modifications and adaptations acquired by organism during its lifetime would be inherited and preserved by its offspring. As a result, changes become cumulative over geological time. This is called the theory of inheritance of acquired characters and it forms the cornerstone of Lamarckism. This is the cornerstone of Lamarckism. The main point is that we adapt to the characters acquire the offspring like inherit and preserve Next, cumulative modifications and adaptations eventually transform a species to a new one in time and space. Simple terms, environment modifies organisms to attain better adaptation, higher efficiency and maximum fitness. That uh, is, natural environment modifies the organisms to Better adaptation and higher efficiency and maximum fitness. Next one today, variations appear in organism is due to constant use and disuse of uh, body part. That is use and disuse theory. Acquired variations are heritable and they are transmitted from one generation to next. Uh, uh, that acquired variation is heritable and that is one generation like that is the theory of inheritance of acquired characters accumulation of heritable variation led to evolution of new species from existing ones that is heritable variations accumulate to new species 
ഉണ്ടാവുന്നു എവിഡൻസസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ ഹയർ നമ്മളെ ക്ലാസ്സസിൽ നമ്മുടെ പഴയ ക്ലാസ്സസിൽ പഠിക്കുന്നതാണ് ജുറാഫിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു എക്സാമ്പിൾ ആൻസസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ജുറാഫ്സ് ആർ സപ്പോസ് ടു ബി ജി ആർ ലൈ ക്വാഡ്പിടൽ ഗ്രേസിംഗ് അപ്പോൺ ഗ്രാസസ് ഇൻ ആഫ്രിക്ക ഡ്യൂ ടു എ ഡിസപ്പിയറൻസ് ഓഫ് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് വെജിറ്റേഷൻ ആൻഡ് availability of trees long necked and long four limbed giraffe developed from short necked and small four limbed deer like ancestors adayathu according to lamarck uh, ancestors of giraffes had short neck and short four limbs they were inhabitants of grassy plains habitually grazing on grasses and browsing on bushes but when the surface vegetation becomes scanty അതായത് സർഫേസ് വെജിറ്റേഷൻ കുറഞ്ഞു ഓക്കെ ദ ആർ ഫോഴ്സ് ടു ബ്രൗസ് ഓൺ ട്രീസ് സ്ട്രെച്ചിങ് അപ് വോ ദർ നെക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ലിവ് ദിസ് ഹാബിറ്റ് വോസ് മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ അവർ മെനി ജനറേഷൻ വിത്ത് റിസൾട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ദ ഫോർ ലിംസ് ഓഫ് മോഡേൺ ജിറാഫ്സ് ആർ ലോങ്ങർ ദാൻ ഹൈൻഡ് ലിംസ് നമ്മൾ കാണുന്നുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ ഫോർ ലിംബ് ഹൈൻഡ് ലിംബിനെക്കാട്ടും ലോങ് ആണ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദർ നെക്ക് ഈസ് ലോങ് ഏറ്റഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ഹാൾഡ് ഹെഡ് ഹൈ ആപ്റ്റ് എ ഹൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് സിക്സ് മീറ്റർ ആർ മോർ അങ്ങനെയാണ് ജുറാഫ് ലോങ് നെക്കിടും പിന്നെ ലോങ് ഫോർ ലിമ്പും ആയത് എന്നാണ് അന്യ ഫോർ ലോങ് ഫോർ ലിമ്പും ലോങ് നെക്കും വന്നത് എന്നാണ് ലാമാർക്ക് പറയുന്നത് അതുപോലെ സ്നേക്സിൻ്റെത് ആൻസിസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ലിംബ്ലെസ് സ്നേക്സ് വോർ ലിസാഡ് ലൈക്ക് റെപ്റ്റൈൽസ് വിത്ത് ഫുള്ളി ഡെവലപ്ഡ് പെൻഡ് ആക്ടീരിയൽ ലിംസ് due to continuous disuse of limbs and stretching of their body to suit their creeping mode of locom- locomotion limbless snakes evolved adayid uh, snake in ancestor lizard like reptiles ayirunu uh, okay adu pentadactyl limbs undayirunu well developed ayirunu pakshengil adinde continuous disuse kaaranam endai limbs ആ ലിംബ്സ് കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് ഡിസ്യൂസ് കാരണം അതിൻ്റെ ലിം അത് ലിംബ്ലെസ് സ്നേക്സ് ആയിട്ട് മാറി ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ജിറാഫിൻ്റെ കേസിൽ യൂസ് തിയറിയാണ് പറയുന്നത് സ്നേക്കിൻ്റെ കേസിൽ ഡിസ്യൂസ് തിയറിയാണ് പറയുന്നത് അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ലാമാക്കിസം ദ ആൻസസ് ഓഫ് ജിറാഫ്സ് ഹാഡ് ഷോർട്ട് നെക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഷോർട്ട് ഫോർ ലിംബ് short neck and short four limbs they were inhabitants of grassy plains habitually grazing on grasses and browsing on bushes but when the surface vegetation becomes scanty they were forced to browse on trees uh, and they stretch upwards with their neck and the four limbs uh, here it is illustrated the elongation of giraffe's neck and four limbs according to lamarck its four limb and uh, neck are elongated due to the stretching upwards to browse on trees anganeyana modern giraffe undayathu ennana lamarck parayunnathu okay next criticism against lamarckism the first postulate namely the tendency of organisms to increase in size is not universally applicable there are instances in which evolutionary process involves reduction in size uh, for example kingdom members of kingdom plantae uh, involves reduction in size the second postulate namely formation of new organs result from a new need is not true Lamarck thought that change of habit may invite new need which in turn may initiate the formation of new organs or may modify the existing organ this is not true and hence is unacceptable suppose a man has ardent and long cherished the desire or internal drive to fly does this means that he can develop wings adayathu ഇപ്പം നമുക്ക് പറക്കാനുള്ള അതിയായ ആഗ്രഹം ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് വിങ്സ് ഉണ്ടാവുന്നില്ല അതുപോലെയാണ് ലാമാർക്കിൻ്റെ തിയറി ആ ഒരു റീസണിൽ അതായത് എക്സാമ്പിൾ വെച്ചിട്ട് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഇപ്പം ഒരു ന്യൂ നീഡ് ഉണ്ട് എങ്കിൽ ഒരു പുതിയ ഓർഗൻ ഉണ്ടാവുന്നില്ല അങ്ങനെ ആ ഒരു പോസ്റ്റിലേറ്റിന് എന്ത് ചെയ്തു ഡിസ്കാർഡ് ചെയ്തു ഓക്കെ
Lamarck's third postulate, the theory of use and disuse, is contrary to actual fact. In reality, the constant use of an organ causes its wear and tear and considerably reduces its efficiency in long run. So, it's inconceivable that constant use or disuse will cause a heritable change in an organ. Both the postulate, that is, the inheritance of acquired characters, is the cardinal aspect of Lamarckism. However, genetic evidence don't support this concept. On the contrary, they disprove it. Okay. Lamarckian theory explains the improvement of a character but doesn't explain utility at the initial stage. The first deadly blow to the concept of inheritance of acquired characters was from August Wiesman, uh, who proved beyond doubt that acquired characters and adaptations are not at all are not at all heritable okay in one of his experiment he went on cutting the tail of rats continuously for many generations but never a tailless rat or a rat with stemby tail was born okay august wiesman a german biologist proposed the theory of uh, continuity of germplasm in 19, uh, 1892 this theory states that a multicellular organism is formed of two types of cells, germ cells and somatic cells. Germ cells have genes for inheritable characters to the offspring, but somatic, cell, uh, somatic cells which have genes of particular organ during one's lifetime only. According to him, environmental forces and influences affect only somatoplasm and not germplasm. Germinal modifications are heritable, but somatic modifications are non-heritable since they perish with the death of the organism. Okay? Acquired characters are only changes in the somatoplasm and are not heritable because uh, it uh, okay and which have genes of particular organ during one's lifetime only that is not heritable Wiesman totally discarded the Lamarckian theory of inheritance of acquired characters on the ground that acquired characters are somatic in origin and hence are not acquired from hence are not uh, heritable according to him heritable modifications are not acquired from use and disuse or from environmental influences but are inborn and germinal in origin okay avum angane lamarck in the theory discard okay thank you